I'm sure. We've had lots of creature features over the distance. In fact, let's just try. Let's start the review of Beast by talking about some. Jaws would be the biggest that I can think of. Cujo is another one. What else can you think of, boys? Uh, Godzilla, King Kong. Hang on, one at a time. We'll go with Dave. Go for it. Uh, Godzilla, King Kong, the Meg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Anaconda. What what do you reckon? Uh, You go next, Greg. Uh, You've got Grizzly. You've got Bats. You've got um, all sorts of ones. Uh, Some of them just um, escaped me at the moment, but they're the two I can think of off the top of my head. Snake. And all the jaws. Yeah. Um, that's right. Snakes on a plane. What, yep. What, what else, Peter? Oh, okay. you can go all the way back to, uh, uh, depending on your definition of creature, to Dracula and uh, all sorts of other creatures, if you like to put it that way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this is Beast. It's MA rated for very good reason. 93 minutes in duration. So big game poachers we have. They're they're wiping out a pride of lions. That's where, when we enter this movie, one of them gets away and goes rogue. And that is a pretty straightforward plot, really, and that is Beast. And to give you a little bit more detail, Dr. Nate Samuels, played by Idris Elba, has taken his two daughters from New York to visit his old friend Martin Battles, played by Shalto Copley, in South Africa. And what was the movie that that brought him to fame, Shalto Copley? District Nine. That, that, thank you very much. District Nine. Absolutely. What a strong accent that man has. It's it's interesting because my wife is South African and she came out when she was thirteen, and she still has a very strong accent too. So it's quite distinctive. There, there's tension in the air because Samuel's is recently widowed. And, and that's, that's, that's Dr. Nate Samuels, the Idris Elba character. And he hasn't been the best of fathers. His eldest is an 18-year-old daughter called Meredith. Called, it's actually, she's known as Mare, played by Iyana Haley. And, and she blames him for the death of her mother, his wife. The other person we spoke about, Martin Battles, Shalto Copley, is a wildlife biologist who manages a game reserve. The day after the father and two kids arrive, he's the one who takes Nate and his girls, Meredith and Nora, Nora played by Leah Jeffries, who's 13, for a look around. Their first sign of trouble is when they come to a village and there's nobody there. And then they make an alarming discovery. It's soon clear that an apex predator is on the loose and Nate, his children and battles a fair game. You see, the beast is hunting all humans after bloodthirsty poachers mowed down his pride. What starts out as a journey of healing for Samuels and the kids becomes a fearsome fight for survival. This movie, Beast, has been written by Ryan Engel, who did The Commuter, from a story by Jamie Privax Sullivan, directed by Balthazar Kormakor, and we know him from the movie Everest, for example. It's got all the hallmarks, in my opinion, of a free-to-air midday movie, Peter. If it wasn't for Idris Elba's star power, I don't think we would have been seeing this at the movies. And, and I've got to say, understandably so. What, what do you reckon? Well, I retitled this film Jaws on Land because it's basically a, a, a restyling of this idea of a predator um, uh, riding roughshod on humans and uh, trying to take them all out for some spurious reason. Look, the CGI uh, lion is, I must say, slightly um, uh, doubtful in terms of the way it looks, and I found the story uh, to be so genre-bound that it was entirely predictable from start to finish. Not that a genre film is bad necessarily, but uh, this one I found was so much by the numbers filmmaking that it, it needed an Icelandic director to at least give you some jump scares and some uh, some uh, clever camera work to make the, the film look as if it has any sort of meaning at all. And in fact, it has no meaning because it, it pays lip service to the idea of wiping out lions or wiping out wildlife in South Africa because it it, uh, it jettisons that very quickly and concentrates on the action and who will survive and whether the CGI lion will look better as the film progresses. Uh, 
etc. So uh, I really had uh, very little to uh, to like about this film, apart from it being, as you quite rightly say, a, a throwaway midday movie. It's a, it's a genre piece um, without any distinction. Well, Greg, the dialogue's pretty pedestrian. The plot has a concocted feel. And, I mean, one example, the relationship between father and elder daughter, that to me was particularly manufactured, to obviously to heighten the drama. But uh, it just doesn't work as well as it could have worked. What do you think? Well, Peter rechristened his jaws on land. I rechristened it Cujo in the jungle, um, <laughs> albeit, albeit with a rogue lion rather than a rabbit St. Bernard terrorised family trapped in their vehicle. Yeah, I and it's also, totally agree. It's also got elements of that, um, the ghost in the darkness. I recall the 1996 film in which Michael Douglas and Val Kilmer hunted down a pair of killer lions there. But I, I didn't mind this, actually. I thought um, Balthazar Kumakar did a good job of bringing up, ratcheting up the suspense there. As Peter said, there are a couple of jump scares in here as well. And I thought it was beautifully shot on location in South Africa there by uh, Oscar-winning cinematographer Philippe, Philippe Russello, who does a great job of capturing the natural beauty of the spectacular landscapes there. And he used um, light and shadow to good effect in creating an ominous mood there. And unlike Peter, I thought the CGI effects that Rick brought the line to light were quite realistically and seamlessly incorporated into the action there. But I agree, it's a B-grade creature feature. It has all the tropes and cliches that have been a staple of the subgenre of this predator hunting down man ever since Jaws scared us out of the water. Um, but I think the presence of Idris Elba elevates it a little bit there. He has a strong presence there. And he does a good job of um, holding the film together. Does he, Greg, does he really? I mean, he's truck. Do you believe he is who the character who he's re representing himself to be? Do you really believe him? Because I mean, I would argue that that's the biggest problem with this movie. That I didn't have enough belief. And, and I mean, if you can't believe, then authenticity is the key when you're watching any movie. And I just what well, you, you could say with Jaws, it genuinely scared you and so on and so forth. This wasn't even in the same ballpark. This did not have the pedigree of the best of breed. I mean, it's in that wheelhouse, but it's very, very average. No? Oh, I, I quite enjoyed it, actually. Ah, oh, okay. Easily pleased. That, Thank you. That, that, that's representative of you as a Saint supporter, isn't it? Easily pleased. <laughs> Is that correct? What? Whatever. And we're coughing our We're coughing our lungs out. What do you what do you think, uh, Dave? Where, where, where's your view on the beast or beast? Yeah, I just viewed this as a as another genre flick. I had a little bit of insight to the film because I was able to interview the director, and there was a few things that he said in that interview that I saw in the film that actually made me respect the film a little bit more. First of all, he was determined to make this in South Africa. He wasn't going to allow the studio to talk him into filming it on a back lot in Hollywood with. Um, a green screen, and he said that actually added to the film because it um, meant that the actors... Well, there was times, he said, when they were, were shooting and a, a lion roared, like, within a kilometre of where they were filming, and he said you can't get that kind of fear on people's faces um, through acting, and that, that actually enhanced it, and I think that helped, but I also think the cinematography helped with this film as well, those long, lingering shots where there was no edits... Uh, especially when they were going through that first village that they got to. I thought that really enhanced it. I think there's a little nod early on in this film to what um, Balthazar is trying to achieve with this film, and that's when Meredith is wearing the Jurassic Park t-shirt early on. He, he's giving a nod to, yeah, this is another genre flick kind of thing. And, and I think he, like from talking to him, he knew that he wasn't making a serious film. This is not going to be his film that people remember him for, but he wanted to make a film where he got to make a statement about poaching um, and what it does to the animals in, in that kingdom and in that cycle on, because this is something that actually happens with poaching. You, you go and change the cycle of a pride and suddenly animals start acting out. It's something that they're seeing in South Africa. I think it could have been done in a better way and maybe go and make a movie about the black mumbers, the, um, the female soldiers that hunt down poachers in South Africa. I think that would have been a better story, but, uh, yeah, it's just a popcorn film. Leave your brain at the door, sit down and enjoy it. 
Mm. Well, I mean, I asked that question. Where I started by saying, if it wasn't for Idris Elba, I don't think we would have seen this in the movies. I think this would have been a straight to DVD release or Blu-ray or whatever. Would you agree with that, Dave? Um, no, because we just saw the reef uh, stalked in cinemas, and that didn't have any big name people either. I think genre films will always have people flock to see them. Like I went and saw The Invitation last night, and there's no big names in that film, and the cinema was full, and I was in a 300 seat cinema. Mm. Yeah, well, I I think there's also been examples of movies that are a lot lot better than this that haven't made it to the big screen, which really troubles me. Having said that, I, I reckon this is a creature feature I could have done without. It's called Beast. It's MA rated, and I will kick it off by giving it a five out of ten. Peter, I agree with you, Alex. Five out of oh ten. Oh my golly! <laughs> um, oh, um, hang on. Have you gone soft on me or something? <laughs> <laughs> what, what the heck going on here? This is not normal. Okay, uh, we'll go with you. Uh, well, Dave, I think you've been influenced by the interview, but let's see what your score is. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. To me, it was just a bit of fluff that I sat down and enjoyed for 90 minutes. Well, that's a high score for something like this, in my opinion. Greg? I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Although that, that's, you know, given that you quite enjoyed it, that's a... Yeah, it's a middling type. I'm surprised, Dave, at seven. Really? That, that's that's a better than average film. I think I just needed something like this at the moment. I've been watching so many in-depth films recently that, that um, and a few of them, I have, I'll admit, like got to me emotionally. I think I just needed a film where I sat down for 90 minutes and watched Idris Elba take on a CGI line. Oh, well, fair enough. Absolutely. Let's go.